All right. Thank you for coming on out and uh, meeting with us. Um, Thank tell you. me a little bit about some any some personal issues that you've had um, with the flooding. <laughs> we kind of want to start with that and kind of sure. see where you're at because you're the, the face of the city. Absolutely. And a lot of times those people get overlooked because you are helping out everyone else. So tell us a little where you're at right now. <laughs> From a personal standpoint, just kind of give you a sense of what took place. I mean, there were over 750 homes that were damaged, um, various levels of severity. Um, my home and my parents' home were two of those 750. Uh, total, when you add on both single-family homes and apartments, it's like 12 to 1,300 homes where people were living. Uh, that are have been devastated uh, in San Marcos throughout the entire county. Wimberley has been devastated as well. Homes that were ripped from their foundations in San Marcos. It's homes that were filled with mud. Cars that were filled all the way to the top of the roofs with water, halfway with water. Uh, lots of material loss, but fortunately for San Marcos, n no loss of life. Uh, that I, I wish I could say the same for our neighbors in Wimberley, but that, that we're still looking for people that, that did not survive the, the, the floods and still looking for closure for those families as well. So uh, it, it's been a, a challenging experience, but it's as time passes, we gradually were healing and with support from so many different groups, it's helped greatly to try to piece those lives back together. It's been amazing the support that the community has um, offered. For example, today the benefit concert is being put on. Tell me a little bit more about that. Tell me about the, um, the, the efforts. The, the, well, all the efforts collectively have been amazing. I mean, this has been an international effort. I mean, it started out local, expanded regionally, state, certainly the federal government's been involved through FEMA and the uh, Housing and Urban Development. But we've had folks from throughout the world that have descended upon Central Texas to provide help and resources, whether it's uh, helping people clean out their homes, helping people start rebuilding their homes, providing them funds so that they can have a place to stay, food to eat, clothes for their children, water to drink, that things, things like all those necessities. And Jeremy Furstenfeld, he reached out to me day one. That Sunday afternoon, the waters were still going down. He said, I feel moved to do something. What can I do? I said, Jeremy, as much as I want to be able to help, I can connect you with Omar Dewey, the owner of the Mark. And from there, you guys are going to have to run with it. And they did. And that's why we're here today. So many wonderful, talented people that are here that are helping put this together. They're contributing not only their time, their talent, but their money. And it's going to make a difference to folks throughout all of Hayes County that have been impacted by this horrific event. So tell us, how can how can um, everybody out there help? What can they do? What's the biggest need and how can they provide? Uh, really, if, if you're watching this right now, the, the hope is that you would consider going online and making a contribution to the United Way of Hayes County. Uh, that that's, a, that's an immediate way that you can help today. If you're looking for opportunities to be able to come to our community and assist through volunteer efforts and hours, so that we, we will need that for weeks to come. I mean, these last two weekends, having all the volunteers in town has been wonderful, but this is a process that's going to take months to be able to rebuild. So folks are going to need help uh, opening up their homes, rebuilding their homes, just trying to piece things back together. And fundraisers like tonight that have been taking place um, throughout this entire weekend and will take place you know, the remainder of the weeks ahead and months ahead are, are huge help in making it happen. But it's, it's good people that are willing to sacrifice and, and, uh, and make a contribution, bring forward their time and energy that helps make what was lost to put those pieces back together and, and rebuild homes and rebuild lives. That's awesome. I actually um, saw on your Facebook page, I think it was today, uh, people coming around trying to encourage people in neighborhoods. And yes. one of the uh, things they discussed with you was looking at it from a different perspective, victim or survivor. Yes, uh, we had a pastor. Uh, one of There's 129 different faith-based organizations that have come to San Marcos, Wimberley, and Martindale over the last two weeks. Uh, one pastor came to our home to assess it, to see if he could send a team of volunteers to come and, and, and help us, uh, you know, demolition our home so that we could rebuild it. And one thing that he, st he stood outside with us and he prayed with us and he said, those that choose to, to start piecing their lives back together and that are gradually, you know, taking the damaged parts out and replacing it with love and hope with other people, they're survivors. They're they're bringing things back together, and you've survived this flood. And if, he said, if you're if you're waiting for someone else to do it for you, then you're a victim. But he said, our family and the, and the good people throughout San Marcos that are coming together and working together and helping their neighbors out, we're all survivors. We're we're and I liked what somebody told me the other day. It's not that we're uh, it's not that we're ending. We are we need to we are uh, starting over together. I love it. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.